Hey, Iron Pigs fans, welcome back to another episode of Welcome to the Pig Leagues. Radio broadcaster Pat McCarthy here, and joined by one of the newest members of the Phillies 40-man roster, left-handed pitcher Garrett Clevenger. Garrett, how are you? Thanks so much for joining us. Good. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. So how is everything going right now? I mean, I'm sure it was a crazy offseason. You find out you're getting added to the 40-man, you're going to big league camp, and then it all gets cut short. But for you, how are you doing overall? Uh, it was definitely a very exciting feeling um, to know that you're getting put on the roster um, and kind of put into the future plans is, is a really exciting feeling. Um, and then going to big league camp was, was a very humbling experience, and it was a lot of fun to be around all the new coaches and all the new guys in the locker room that I hadn't met and, and to kind of meet those guys and be around those guys on a daily basis was pretty awesome. And then it all getting cut short and, and just being over like that was, was pretty crazy. So it was a pretty interesting first big league experience for sure. So for Philly fans that don't know, drafted by the Orioles, you come mm -hmm. over in the deal for, uh, for Jeremy Hellickson in 2017. Yep. And correct me if I was wrong, that was right around the trade deadline or right around the all-star break that you came over, right? I believe we were on yeah, the it was right at, Reading and then you came over? Yeah, it was right at the deadline. It was like one of the last like day or two, I think. So yeah, it was pretty late, um, pretty late in that deal. So. so you spend the second half of 2017 in Reading. You open up 2018 in Reading. And then the injury happens when you're down in Clearwater. How did that whole process go on for you? How were you able to bounce back from an ACL injury, which is not very common in baseball? Yeah, it was, it was definitely um, not expected for sure. Um, I mean, I've, I've never been hurt before in my life. So for that to be the first one to, have a, to go and have ACL surgery was pretty uh, eye-opening experience and didn't really know what to expect. But, um, you know, I just, you know, kind of did what, what the doctors told me. and did all the rehab with um, Joe Roush and Alex Plum and, and Ray Burris and all those guys. And, you know, they, I think, helped me come back stronger than I was before, which led to a good 2019 and, and kind of put me on track to, you know, be on the roster and then hopefully be in Philly pretty soon. So. so let's jump to 2019. The strikeout numbers through the roof. What changed for you in 2019 that allowed the velocity to jump and then you mix in that breaking ball so well? Um, I think a lot of it had to do with, you know, the rehab, I got a lot stronger. I was probably in, in some of the best shape of my life. And then, you know, I did some mechanical changes before I got to Reading. Um, and then being in Reading kind of got my feet under me after, you know, a couple of weeks or so. And then we kind of hit the ground running. And I don't know if it was the strength and the mechanics that kind of allowed the velocity to jump or the time off where I wasn't throwing certainly helped a little bit. but um, I think the velocity was kind of a surprise to everybody. It just kept, it kept climbing and kept climbing at the end of the year. And uh, I was finally throwing my slider for strikes and for, you know, a strikeout pitch and then dropping in the curveball as well was a big help. So it all kind of came together, which was a lot of fun. How were you able to keep your arm healthy while rehabbing the lower body? I mean, so many times for pitchers, you're keeping the lower body strong because you're rehabbing the arm. What, how were you able to keep the arm strong while rehabbing the lower half? I think, well, a lot of it, especially in the early stages of rehab, I wasn't doing a whole lot. Um, there wasn't any arm care. We were kind of just focused on, you know, I was just focused on learning how to walk again and learning how to run again and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But, you know, once we kind of got over that, that hump, we kind of incorporated some of the arm care stuff. And so I was doing, you know, band work and weights and all that kind of stuff almost every day. And so I think that that kind of helped a lot. And then the throwing progressions were very slow and deliberate. But I think that allowed, you know, to build my volume and, you know, make my arm stronger than it was before. How did you feel at the end of 2019? I mean, when you looked at your numbers, were you, was it relief? Was it surprise? Was it just, you know, happiness that this is where the jump you had made from 2019 or from 2018, I should say? What were you feeling at the come September of 2019? Um, it was definitely, a, it was a very good feeling. Um, 2018 was tough. Uh, it was hard and being able to come back after everything that had happened in 2019 and to be able to go out and throw the ball like I was throwing it, it, it made baseball a lot of fun again, which, which was a relieving feeling and a very exciting feeling. You know, I was, I was having fun with the guys in Reading every day. It was, it was just a great time. And on top of it, we were playing well. We, you know, clinched the division. We set strikeout records. So it was a lot of, it was a great group to be around. It was a lot of fun. and to put it all, all together, 
like I did and, and throw the way I did made it that much better. Well, those that follow Phillies minor league baseball know how much fun it is to play in Reading in baseball town. Tell us a little bit some stories about your time in Reading and how much how much fun it was to play uh, at that type of ballpark. It, it was pretty awesome. I mean, they they packed that stadium out when, even when we're not doing so well. And then to have the team that we did in 2019 with we had some really good pitchers, um, a lot of prospects. I mean, we had at one time we had four first rounders on the team. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's going to draw fans to the park. And then on top of it, you know, coming down the stretch, we were playing really well and it got everybody in town excited to come out and see, you know, a playoff run or a division clinching run. Um, it made it, it brought that much more energy to the park and got everybody involved and everyone excited and they were all behind us. And it was a lot of fun. Now, I know you haven't put on an Iron Pigs uniform yet. Have you heard stories of Coca-Cola Park, though? Are you excited to hopefully get to Allentown in the near future? I haven't heard too many stories, but I'm definitely excited for, you know, a new park and a new team. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting to Allentown and kind of getting to know the town and, and being in the new stadium and everything. So you're from Lawrence, Kansas, which in terms of sports, professional sports-wise, isn't really a mecca. But in college sports, it's a mecca right at the University of Absolutely. Kansas. I know you're a duck from college, but you're a Jayhawk originally. What exactly is a Jayhawk, and what does it mean to be from that area? Um, it's definitely something you grow up in. I mean, you grow up in the area, and you bleed Kansas basketball. I mean, your parents either went to KU or you end up going to KU. Like, everybody's pretty tied tied to the university around here, and when it comes to basketball time, it gets pretty nuts. Uh, I have a lot of family members that – that are involved in, in everything up there. And so we try and go see as many games as possible. And there's nothing quite like a home game in, in Allen Fieldhouse. And it's, if you're a sports fan, it's definitely something that, that you should experience. Is there one game that sticks out from your youth that you went to that was above all, uh, be all of any other Kansas game? It's, it's hard to pick. There have been so many great games and, and so many great players that have come through there. Um, I think there's one that was maybe – Two or three years ago, we were playing West Virginia at home. We were both ranked in the top five. Um, we had a great team. They had a great team. Um, I think it went to – we were down, like, 20 with, like, three or four minutes left. End up coming back. It goes to, like, double or triple overtime. We pull out the win. It was, it was one of the craziest games I've ever, been, I've ever seen and ever seen in person. So it was a lot of fun. So you go to college. You elect to go to Oregon, become a Duck. What drew you to Eugene? I mean, we talked to Cole Irvin about it, and he talks about what he loved about Oregon so much. But what about you? Why did you – what drew you to the Pacific Northwest? It's hard to pinpoint one thing, but I think being from the Midwest and then going out there to something so different mm -hmm. that I'd never really seen or, you know, lived in um, was definitely something that I looked forward to. And then once I got there – I'd taken a couple of visits before, and then once I got to Oregon, I, everything just felt right when I was there in Eugene and on campus and with the coaches, and it just felt like a, the right place to be and a place that I could spend, you know, three or four years, and it turned out to be the best decision I ever made, and it was, it was a great time. Is there one jersey that stands out above the rest of them that you like the best? I mean, I know they're changing every single day. We had it. We had we had a lot of options, which made it fun, but it's hard. To, it makes it hard to pick one. Um, I mean, I loved our our home whites were awesome. We had a like an apple green jersey that we wore on the road that was pretty sweet. Um, Nike did a really good job of taking care of us and and creating some new looks, and they made it a lot of fun for for all the guys with you know our cleats and hats, and we'd have gloves and and everything. So we we really appreciated all the work that Nike did for us. How much say did you guys have in mi mixing, matching the uniforms, or was it all like just kind of predetermined of what was being worn with what? It was pretty set up. Uh, we didn't get a pick too often. Uh, our equipment guys kind of would coordinate with the other team and kind of figure out what they were wearing, and so we could kind of figure out what we were wearing. And we had a set weekend set, like every the same jersey Friday, Saturday, Sunday, mm -hmm. home and away. And then the midweek games, you would kind of mix it up a little bit, but. For the most part, it was pretty uh, pretty predetermined, but we didn't mind it. It all looked pretty good. So, Pac-12 baseball is obviously really competitive. Is there a place that you enjoyed going to the most to play against? Um, the games against Oregon State were always pretty wild. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think everybody who's played in that 
in that series has good and bad memories at either in Corvallis or in Eugene, but they're a lot of fun. And, and uh, a lot of guys, you know, that you played down the road that either played at Oregon state or you run into all kinds of guys from the PAC 12. We always loved going down to play in Arizona and LA. There's always a lot of duck fans down there, which made it fun. And, you know, you just, you meet a lot of cool people across baseball that, that have ties to the PAC 12 and it makes it a pretty special conference. All right, I'll put you on the spot here. Oregon football game, Kansas basketball game. Which has more energy? Ooh, that's tough. That's tough. I don't know. It's it's hard to match the energy that's inside Allen Fieldhouse on a big mm-hmm. conference game. But Austin Stadium is a pretty special place too. I think. I think as far as basketball and, and football, they're they're pretty comparable. It's it's tough to compare the two, but you know I think it's they're they're hard to beat in their own respects. Um, I haven't been back to a duck football game in a long time and hopefully getting back there soon for one, which would be awesome. So, but they're both, you know, kind of a must see venue for a sports fan for sure. What is a March in Oregon like compared to a March in Pennsylvania? Um, A little warmer, not, uh, it doesn't get as cold out there just because you're so close to, to the coast. I mean, you're an hour Mm -hmm. from the ocean, which is fun. And then, you know, you get it. It does rain a lot. It'll mm-hmm. rain a little bit every day, but it's like a almost a mist. It's not a heavy like Midwest or Pennsylvania rain like we're used mm-hmm. to. But um, we make it work. I mean, you learn to play through the rain, and I think it 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 makes it makes it tough at first, but you get used to it, and you're better for it down the road. So it's not too bad. All right. So you grew up a Kansas City sports fan. Obviously, an awesome time to be a KC sports fan. Talk about the Super Bowl run a little bit and what it was like being a Chiefs fan because I have some friends that are Chiefs fans and it seemed very similar to the feeling for them that Eagles fans had when the Eagles won the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. I mean, we knew we had a great team. They had a great uh, regular season run. Um, we played a few games in the playoffs. I think they got down the, by the Texans by like 24 points or something like that. And we're, I mean, we're all sitting there thinking it's over and the season's done and then all of a sudden here comes here comes Patrick Mahomes and leads them back and you just can't count that team out with how much talent they have on the offensive side and then with how much fire they played with on the defensive side it's it makes for I mean it makes for a Super Bowl champion which the whole city got behind them and there's a huge parade and everybody went nuts it was it was pretty cool to see. Well I know as an Eagles fan I would say 90 percent of us were all rooting for the Chiefs because of Andy Reid and just yeah. what he's done. I mean, how had he gravitated to that city as soon as he came in? I mean, is he – there was a lot of mixed feelings of Andy Reid in Philadelphia at times, but how do they feel about him in Kansas City? I think he's – I think he's one of the beloved coaches that's that's come through here. I mean, ever since he showed up, I mean, early years kind of slow, but everybody knew he was building something, and, and it definitely came, came to fruition these last couple of years of them just dominating the league. and. I think everybody in Kansas City loves him, and hopefully he feels the same way about Kansas City and, and likes it here, and hopefully he'll stick around and get us a few more wins. What was your reaction when they drafted Patrick Mahomes? Because I know there was a lot of confusion amongst a lot of fans that they didn't really know what to expect, especially because Alex Smith was still playing pretty well at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was kind of – it was pretty under the radar. I mean, you know, he's a first-round pick, and nobody was really talking about him too much, and – all this stuff. And, you know, I mean, he was, he lit it up at Texas tech, but you never knew what you were going to get at the pro level. Um, and then he had the opportunity to learn from Alex Smith for a couple of years, which I'm sure was an amazing learning experience for him. And then it, it comes his time and he just lights it up and, and does what he does. So he's a pretty special player and everybody in Kansas city definitely loves him. I've heard a lot about chiefs tailgates. What are they like? Is it an experience like nothing else? It's it's pretty crazy. I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure the the people in Philly can understand and and can uh, you know match it pretty well. But I mean, they're showing up. They're lining up before the gates even open, and you know, setting up their grills and trucks and everything, and hang out until the game starts, and then head into the game. And they'll come out and tailgate after the game too. So it's it's definitely a a full day thing, and it's a lot of fun when you get to go be a part of one. We talked to Listy the other day, and he defended Texas barbecue is greater than anything else in the entire world. <laughs> a lot is made of Kansas City barbecue. Uh-huh. What would be your defense for Kansas City barbecue being better than the rest of the country? 
I don't know. I think I think my defense is we have Kansas City barbecue here, but then you go somewhere else and they like they'll have something on on their menu that says something about Kansas City barbecue or like something in their store that has Kansas City barbecue. And so I think, you know, that kind of that kind of speaks for itself and that they're doing something right here and and making some pretty good food. I know I love to eat barbecue and I'm sure Listy can say the same for Texas barbecue and it's just kind of like a like a uh, soul food kind of thing where you know you go home and you want to have some good barbecue and makes you feel makes you feel at home so is that one of the things you go back to right away when you get back home you look for one of your favorite it's, barbecue it's plans? definitely in the plans yeah mm-hmm. it's definitely in the plans to get some barbecue whenever you're whenever you're at home there's a few few good spots and some like mom and pop shops that are you know doing ribs and brisket and all that stuff and you definitely got to get some while you're here Shifting our focus back to baseball a little bit, what is the one thing that you're missing right now more than anything? What are you looking forward to getting back to once the season resumes? Um, I think just being on the field again. I mean, you know, going from being there every day and working with the guys and, you know, kind of doing your thing on the field. And then, you know, we had a couple days of, of just meetings and no workouts trying to figure this whole thing out. And then all of a sudden it was over. You know, everybody was packing their bags and heading home. So it was kind of a, it was a hard thing to, you know, wrap your mind around that it was just over for now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody's getting really creative right now on how to stay in shape and throw and do all this stuff. And so I think it'll be, it'll be a breath of fresh air when we can all get back and and be on the same field and kind of back in our routine again. Well, Garrett, I really appreciate taking the time and joining us and hopefully we get back to baseball really soon and hopefully we can get you to Coca-Cola Park and wear an Iron Picks uniform. Absolutely. It sounds great. Garrett Cleverger joining us today on Welcome to the Pig Leagues. Thanks so much for joining us, Garrett. Thank you so much for joining us. And hopefully we get back to baseball real soon. I'm radio broadcaster Pat McCarthy saying thanks for listening. and We'll talk to you on the next episode of Welcome to the Pig Leagues.